Hello and welcome to the July edition of Marshall Chamber Community Connect. This month's guest is George Taylor. George is with SMSU and the Center of Innovation and Entrepreneurship. Thanks for being my guest this month. Happy to be here, Brent. Thank you. Yeah, so as always, we'll kind of kick, uh, recap the events that happened in June. So let's talk about those. And there was a lot of things in, in June. It's kind of, you can rewind to last year how many things didn't happen. Now there's all sorts of good things happening. So let's start off with the Shades of the Past car show. That event was huge. It was the weekend of June 4th. I had gone over there with my son and a couple of friends, and it's just so many good, so many classic cars out there. The parade on that Friday night, it was good to see everybody come out for the Shades of the Past. The Gold Rush Raffle event was held on June 5th right here on campus. This was a date that was set back in about February or March. Typically in January or February is when it's held. They fast forwarded to June 5th, crossed their fingers, and it turned out to be a really good event. 613 tickets were sold for uh, this event, the event goes towards SMSU Student Athlete Scholarship. So thanks to everybody attended and anybody that put bids on the event itself. Uh, similarly, the SMSU uh, David Drone Golf Classic was held at the Marshall Golf Course on Friday, June 18th. 31, 31 uh, um, teams played that day. Great day for golf, great weather. George, do you golf? I do not. I suck at golf. Oh, well, no, that's shoot. <laughs> well, it's not like there were a bunch of pros out there, but yeah, well, maybe next year. Um, uh, very proudly, the Tigers baseball team made it all the way to the state tournament this year. It was just a great run for them. Congrats on making it as far as you did, uh, as far as they did. So good job, uh, Coach Pollock and the team uh, for representing Marshall well. And congrats to all the, the, the players, the Tiger baseball players. Uh, the week of June 14th, the Marshall Area Dementia Network hosted activities all week long, uh, and including painting the town purple. There's a chamber event, a fight, and it ended with a walk and 5K for Run for the Mem Memories that sa that Saturday. Uh, very important group uh, in the Marshall Area Dementia Network, and thanks for all that you do for that. On the chamber side of things, we hosted a business during hours event at Action Manufacturing. That was one of our first in-person after hours or during hours events. Thanks for everybody that came to that. And just last Wednesday at the new Aber location, not far from here, we also hosted a good group of people to check out Chet's new loca location of Abra. And then finally, I'm actually going to recap one of our July events. Today is uh, Tuesday, July 6th. So uh, this past uh, Sunday, Independence Day, July 4th, we had, there was all sorts of people out at Independence Park celebrating uh, the uh, July 4th holiday. Kayla Daniels was singing at, at 8.30. The fireworks is at 10.15. So thank you to hy and the City of Marshall for putting this on and the return of it in 2021. So with that, let's get to our guest. Uh, so Dr. George Taylor reported to Southwest Minnesota State and the uh, University in August of 2020. What an interesting time to move at, at any time that, during 2020. He teaches management classes with a focus on leadership, entrepreneurship, and organizational development. George has a strong record of entrepreneurship and business coaching and was a leadership fellow for Memphis in 2004. Uh, also known as uh, Leadership Academy Memphis, where he served on various citywide initiatives. He is married with three adult children. He loves to travel, work out, and spend time with his wife. Again, thanks, George, for being my guest Thank today. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Having me. So I've got a few, few questions for you, George. Obviously, some really cool initiatives that you're, you're bringing to the center this year. The Center of Innovation and Entrepreneurship is coming up fast on its first anniversary. George, tell us more about the center and what is it? what has it come to mean? Well, first and foremost, the center is an incubator, right? And as an incubator, the center promotes entrepreneurship, but the center is just so much more than entrepreneurship. That innovation piece, that doesn't get emphasized enough. So what we're going to do in this upcoming year, make sure that everybody knows they have a space in the center. Mm -hmm. Because the center rests on this notion of the entrepreneur mindset. And so what is the entrepreneur mindset? The entrepreneur mindset says, this is a way of promoting critical thinking, collaboration, and teamwork that fosters innovation. And so, yes, that business startup activity is there, but whether you're working on a new initiative in the chamber or whether we're doing something here within the university or the community leader or non-government organization, everyone has a space in the center. And so that's what we're really going to focus on this upcoming year. Okay, good. So you've been getting out and engaging in the business community, which is going to be some of your strongest partners with this. They are the ones who are going to play an important role. So what, what have you learned from the business community thus far? 
the business community wants collaboration, collaboration, collaboration. Yeah, right. They want access to the students. Yeah. They want to make sure that the center is truly, truly sustainable. And you know, when you're a community business leader, you want to make an impact on the other people. You want to make an impact on the students. And so the overarching theme by far was make sure that we have access to the students, make sure that the center is resource, make sure that it is community driven and reciprocal in the nature that, yes, we want to give back to the students, but we also know that the students are smart and we are willing to learn as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, that right now, uh, obviously the number one issue in business right now is the workforce and whether it's through the center or through the public schools, the public schools is rolling out this really cool initiative of the CEO program and then, so there's, and, but the, and a bit like you, to your point, the businesses want to get involved. They mm -hmm. want to have a say in some of these um, problem solving issues of trying to get more workforce. Absolutely, absolutely. Into the area. So during the spring of this year, I. Uh, you attended uh, an end of the year workshop for the Center of Innovation and Entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship. Are there any activities like that planned for this year? Brad, we already booked. Yeah. We already booked all the way for the academic year, and that's just amazing. We already had three workshops coming up, and these workshops focus on entrepreneurship, but there's also a workshop that extends beyond entrepreneurship. We have a marketing workshop coming up. We have a workshop on diversity, equity, and inclusion coming mm -hmm. up. And so that goes back to this notion that the center is for everybody. And then you still got the great work from the value entities. And the value entities are in Actis and the Southwest Marketing Advisory Center. They're still doing their business consulting project. As you know, you yep. had Carter last month. Yeah. Um, and then you have our strategic partner, the South, uh, Small Business Development uh, Center. And we still have Liz doing great, great work with this with us, and we're trying to find ways in which we can merge SBDC and the center to provide seamless end-to-end -end service to our students as well as the business community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Liz is certainly, uh, like you said, Carter was on here last month. Liz with SBDC is just a wealth of information, that's for sure. Absolutely. In working with the Center of Innovation and Entrepreneurship, some of the traditional startup image comes to mind, yet you've shared the center extends beyond just the traditional notion of entrepreneurship. What other benefits does the center provide to students in the community? Well, the other benefits is that the center serves as this hub of activity in which you can think differently about problems that you face within the university setting, within the organizations, or within the community. And so we want to make sure that community and student stakeholders know that hey, you're going to be collaborating with various stakeholders. And this is a great opportunity for the community to partner and enter into an ongoing dialogue and exchange with the university to make sure that initiatives and programs are better for everybody, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, what's there not to like about that? I mean, we're going to turn out student entrepreneurs. That piece is a given but also to improve processes and systems within institutions and organizations throughout Marshall and the surrounding region, I think that's a lot to be happy about. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yep. I think it's fair to say the first year of the center uh, was centered on creating awareness and showing value. What are the priorities this for the year, for the first year? Um, you know, I know that there, you have uh, an advisory board, uh, including myself and a few others that kind of help um, with that, you know, any sort of things that we can kind of pitch in on? Mm -hmm. um, this next year, we're going to really focus on making sure that the students understand and see the value in the center. And it's like I said earlier, student, student, student. And then with that, making sure that we actively engage the community so that the community knows that the center is for real, it's sustainable, and it's positioned in a way that's going to contribute to the economic development of the media community, but also the Southwest community as well. And that's, that sounds like a lot, but with advisors like you and uh, hopefully more money coming in, that's a very doable uh, set of initiatives, and we're very excited about it. Mm -hmm. If a business wanted to reach out to you, George, to get involved, what, what's the best way to reach out to you? Uh, to email me at george.taylor.2 at smsu.edu, or call me at 507 Five three seven six one eight zero. Be happy to take your call and look forward to working with the community. Very excited about this. Good. Well, perfect. Well, thanks again for.
being here and, um, and kind of letting our uh, watchers know exactly what's going on with the center. And of course, uh, the chamber wants to be a resource too. So if it's if if you need to reach out to me, and we can, obviously I have access, full access to uh, Dr. Taylor as well. So. Can I put yeah. a footnote here? Oh, absolutely. Uh, one important event that's coming up very soon that we really want the community to turn out and support is our grand opening. So right now the month is October. We'll nail down those dates if we get closer, but we really, really need the community and the business leader, leaders on Marshall and the surrounding areas to come out and support our students and local entrepreneurs. Good. Is it going to be, do you know the date? Is it going to be right around homecoming, or do we not know? I uh, don't know. I okay. don't want to put it too close to homecoming. Okay. <laughs> right, 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 right. But, um, yeah, looking forward to getting some hard dates out to you real soon. Okay, good. All right. Thanks, George. So let's touch on a little bit of the things that are going on here in July for our watchers. Of course, this past Saturday's, with the farmer's market kicked off between the YMC and Schwann's. It's always one of my favorite events, it, and it goes so long, but it goes so quickly at the same time. It goes from July 3rd through October 30th. Um, a lot of our local area farmers and uh, kind of the kind of, kind of small entrepreneurs actually come out. My daughter, who's 13, wants to bring out some cookies, so hopefully maybe we'll see her out there. Uh, again, between the YMCA and the Schwann's, the parking lot between the YMCA and Schwann's. Uh, Mayfac is starting to put on their concerts again starting uh, tomorrow night, Wednesday, July 7th, back at the band shelter. So if your music is your thing, come on out uh, and uh, take a jaunt out to Liberty Park under the band shelter for some music every single Wednesday at 7 o'clock through July. Do you like music? I love music. Now that's something I can get into. That's where you should, that's where <laughs> yeah. definitely where you should go to. And uh, there's a huge SMSU presence. Usually there, you see a lot of faculty out there. Come on out. It is a really fun time. That's for sure. Absolutely. The Pride and the Tiger Foundation uh, Golf Tournament is next Monday, July 12th. This is a fun uh, fun afternoon out at the Marshall Golf Course. All proceeds go towards public and private schools as well as scholarships for the high schoolers. Crazy days. It's going to be uh, is back on. Well, actually, it was on last year, but it is going to be back more in full force. We're actually having some outside vendors come back to the town. This is going to be next Thursday, July 15th. Uh, this is a good way to shop local. You hear the chamber. You hear myself talk about uh, shopping local and doing your, all your business local. This is a good opportunity. It's not just downtown. It's throughout the whole city for all the businesses. will have all sorts of deals. Be sure on the, be on the lookout for those deals that are throughout Marshall. Chamber coupon books, if you haven't gotten your chamber coupon books, will be on special that day as well. The SMSU football alumni and friends golf scrambles moving back to Marshall this on Saturday, July 17th. This is specific for scholarships go towards the SMSU football players. Finally, on the chamber side of things, we are hosting an Ag Business State of Agriculture event out on Tuesday, July 27th from 11.45 to 1. This is going to be back under the Hoop Barn out at Lyon County Fairgrounds. Last year was our first time under the Hoop Barn because of COVID, but we decided that the Lyon County Fairgrounds is actually a really good location to have a State of Agriculture event. Uh, this year, the panelists will include Carolyn Olson with Olson Organics, Chad Drake with Bremer Bank, Senator Gary Dames, Ken Fransky with Central Crop Consulting, and Mike Borbroom with Borbroom Mega Resources. So this is usually draws about 100 people. Last year, actually, a lot of SMSU egg professors and the egg department were there as well. But nice. uh, yeah, with that, again, George, I sure do appreciate being my guest. Right, thank you for it's having me. It's a pleasure having you on. All these updates, uh, a lot of things we talked about, can be found on our website, marshallmn.org, or on the Visit Marshall website on visitmarshallmn.com. Next month, speaking of visitmarshallmn.com, I have Cassie Weiss, and she is the director of Visit Marshall to talk about what to expect for this fall. So one month is already in August. We're talking about fall activities. I don't know. Are you ready for that? So with that, uh, thanks again for tuning in, and we'll see you in August.